Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another round of FITC Global Webinar. This is going to be one in various parts of the leadership series to you. Over the last weeks, we've brought the best of the world, leveraging technology to reach so many of us, to speak to the world about the things that they need to know. So many of the speakers have been drawn from top leaders of industries, leaders of corporations, people, peer experts in people management, but most importantly, people who have positioned themselves in their content to help to impact others through knowledge. The COVID-19 has changed the way that the world relates to one another. Whether it's with regards to the workforce, with regards to, and with regards to economies. Over the last few months, we have seen tremendous challenges facing humanity. The COVID-19 health challenge, which has also impacted economies and have moved on to become even more than a health challenge, but economic disruption around the world. And this disruption have also destabilized Today's program is going to be focused on post-COVID-19, how do we turn adversity to advantage? And we do know that there is a whole lot of opportunities that we are bringing to you the best speakers of the world that will be able to shape minds, shape thoughts, and change mindsets and share insights and information about what the world should be doing right now. Who are we at FITC? FITC is a globally inspired world-class knowledge organization. We lead the discussions and knowledge, build capacity organizations, help industries to build capacity to build their organizations and to build economies. It is set up and founded by organizations in the financial service institution who are focused on building capacity to strengthen the financial It was created to be able to build solid resources that will help the Nigerian financial institutions grow beyond that, helping Africa grow, helping the world grow, and our impact transcends around the world. And so what do we do? We create knowledge and offer this through training and learning, consulting and advisory, and top-level research. What about our reach? We have impacted financial institutions and, of course, allied institutions from the Central Bank of Nigeria, NDIC, Stambi, Sterling Bank, UBA, you name it across the entire financial service sector and beyond. It's also that the growth sectors are huge. Now, what are we doing with the webinars? We've spoken about our webinars to reach the world, to share knowledge, to create knowledge, to create content. And we recognize that our programs have impacted the whole world. So you can see that track and all of the places. The last 39 years of operation, close to 100,000 people impacted. What about our reach for this webinar? Through the webinar, we have focused on bringing information on leadership series, bringing content knowledge on talent management, helping to shape organizations with business performance series, series. You would keep seeing all of that. And as our participants, you would always be in the know because we would always let you in. Tremendous. Over the months, we have seen those webinars reach minimum of 20 countries, five continents of the world, the whole of African continent, and loads of countries of the world. So at this time, I say again, good morning, America. Good morning, Africa. Good afternoon, Asia. Good evening, Australia. 
Because you will see with the profile that we actually have people from all across the countries of the world. One of the things I will assure you is today we are bringing you whole loads of very resourceful, very knowledgeable, very intelligent speakers who will share individuals and corporations equipped in a way that they can turn adversity to advantage. So today we shall be talking to a keynote speaker, would be Feladi Rotoye. We know him as a major nation builder, people shaper, mind shaper, development expert. He is the president of Gemstone Nation Builders. He is also a former presidential candidate of Nigeria, and we know also would be the president one day very soon because Nigerian trust in his capability. We also know that another speaker today who has done great things with media, with communications, but at this point in time, today has been able to create the kind of content that helps people find joy. So the anxiety and fear of the world today is not where we should be. Where we should be is to move ahead and above prevention and fear. Chiwe will give us some insights on that today. And of course, our mean, economy is Chiwe. Chiwe is going to be speaking to us about how all of this could be this impact economies. And of course, people naturally. Everybody is worried about money, but as companies, as businesses, as individuals, Chiwe would help us get ahead. And of course, Steve, the mind shaper. Steve is going to be helping us today to teach the participants from all across the world about how we can begin to set towards positivity so that we can leverage positive thoughts and positive mindset and positive action to get ahead of the adversity of the COVID-19 and then to turn all of this to advantage. And so today's theme is very apt. Post COVID-19, turning adversity to advantage. And at this time, we're going to be looking at the number of people our speakers are going to be reaching. We've got 3,125 registrants from 12 African countries and 21 additional countries in the world. You'd see those countries, Nigeria, we've got USA, we've got UAE, we've got Ghana, we've got Australia. You can tell that this is, we are speaking to the world, guys. And I'm extremely delighted we are doing this with some of Nigerians best. Thank you speakers again. Look at where these people are coming from. Some of them are students, some of them are self-employed. Some of them do not also have any employment because they're also hoping to be able to get something out of this. We've seen the world, the way that COVID-19 has changed even the status of people. But I know that everyone will be sufficiently equipped. Besides the participants' profiles, we already know that the industries that they represent is very diverse. And look at that again. Banking, financial sector, entrepreneurs, medical, it cuts across. So our speakers, you will see that you are speaking to the whole of the world, the industries, and the best of the professions. Besides that, we will also be getting all of our participants going any moment from now. We thank you all for coming, for accepting to speak at this event, to share your knowledge with the world. Thank you, our participants, wherever it is that you are turning in from. 861 companies that you have represented today. Sit back, great things are going to be coming to you. Great learning is going to be, would be coming to you today. All of the companies would be grossly impacted. On this note, I would say, Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you, our speakers. And I'm going to be calling on you, fella, because you've got the stage. Thank you, fella. And please, well, give claps for all of our speakers for even <laughs> us to be on this today. Thank you. You can see that the e claps are coming up. Yes, thank you. Thank you for the claps. Thank you. Absolutely. Yes, we see you. We see you. Thank you. Yes. Fella, that's for you now. Thank you. Well, Okay, well, thank you so much, Chizo, for having me. And I really want to say welcome to the world. Hello, world. Uh, thank you for joining us today. I, I think if there's ever been a time when everyone was interested in one topic, 
because everybody was affected by it, it probably is now, because we are actually dealing with a global issue that is, you know, everyone is dealing with at the same time. Um, if you're connecting, um, first of all, I want to say thank God you're safe. Uh, so please keep safe um, and as we go along, you know, and see how we can turn uh, the challenges and the adversities that might reach out to us through this particular season into opportunities and advantage going forward. Uh, my job is really very simple over the next four and a half minutes or so is to really just be a forerunner, you know, uh, uh, almost like an intro, just putting context to the conversation that uh, my, my panelists are going to have. Uh, amazing guys. Um, but I thought that the way, the best way for me to do this is to, uh, is to actually share an, a story of some time in my life when I was able to turn adversity into an advantage. So let me, let me say it this way. I just, so in, 2000 and in 1992, I, I started my career as an investment management consultant uh, and a venture capital uh, uh, pro, an analyst. Uh, I was working in an organization called Ventures and Trusts. And from there, I had gone on to do my MBA, came back later, joined another organization called Philips Consulting, and really went deep diving into the world of management and consulting. Um, then I started my own management consulting firm in 2001. And, you know, my focus was especially on the banking sector um, and more importantly, just focusing on how to help banks differentiate um, themselves through the quality of service since they couldn't do it through products or pricing or any of those things. Um, apparently, the way that what we were doing was really very important and, and it worked well. Within two years, we were already managing the customer management strategy for about 14 banks. And, um, you know, it, life was good. Business was good. Everything was on the roll. We were running trainings, running retreats, doing surveys. Everything was happening. The banking sector was doing well. And all of a sudden, boom, on the 6th of July, 2004, the central bank governor, Professor Charles Soludo, announced that, you know, that the CBN had determined to consolidate the banking sector and had raised the minimum capitalization for banks to 25 billion. Let me quickly put the, here that at that time, this is 2004, 2005, banks were, the average bank was, there were 89 banks in Nigeria and the average bank was about 1.2 billion. Uh, in capitalization. So the first thing that banks realized was that this was an existential threat and therefore they cut out any kind of, you know, training, tra who's, who's training, training what? I beg, we don't even know whether our people are still going to be here. Cut the long story short, business went dry for almost every consultant, um, you know, who was running trainings and all of that. It was an existential threat. People were laying off staff and all of that. At that point in time, in 2005, I realized that there was, it was either submerge or emerge. Something had to happen. So I took some time out, went back, and started to think to myself, don't hold on to what it is that you call, this is my area, customer management, what do the banks need? Came out after a three-day retreat with a product called 70 questions that you need to answer, the banks needed to answer to be able to win the heart and money of their investors. Since most of the banks were turning their staff into uh, marketers, we said, let's do that. And to cut the long story short, there were five banks that found, you know, what we were doing extremely useful. They hired us. I was literally, for almost a year and a half later, we were going every day from one part of this country to the other, positioning banks, um, the bankers, teaching them how to be able to it was the best time of my consulting life up till that point in time. And so what, I, what, what was the thing that I had learned? Um, you, you know, the first thing I learned was literally that opportunity wears a mask. I want you to please write this down if you can. Opportunity wears a mask. That mask is called adversity. But opportunity will give a reward called advantage to anybody that can remove that mask and discover the opportunity behind the adversity. So the, what, what was, I mean, the adversity was that banks were consolidating and therefore they did not want, nobody was spending time on, on things that we typically were doing. 
but there was an advantage behind it. So we were able to see behind that. And, and I want you to please understand that regardless of what it is you're seeing right now, that is going to be something. The second one is that it, it required a mentality of leadership from my part. You know, and, and like they always say, leadership is the, is the ability to determine outcomes, regardless of what it is that happens to you. So there's incoming and outcoming, <laughs> right? So, you know, you can't determine what happens to you, but you can determine what you do with what happens to you and what comes out of it. Um, it's that same thing about when life throws you lemons, make lemonade. Leaders know how to be able to take what life throws at them, add one thing or the other, and it's going to be the same thing. You determine what you want to make out of this experience. You will tell a story to your grandchildren sometimes later. Ask yourself, what is the story? Am I going to be telling a story of adversity or am I going to be telling a story of advantage? The last thing that I was just going to quickly say is that in, in those times, what leaders do is to position themselves for repositioning. In other words, position to reposition yourself for growth. Position to reposition yourself for growth. Meaning that the, the greatest outcome that leaders want is sustained growth. So whatever you have to do to be able to sustain your growth is going to be the most important thing. And at this time, what have we, over the last four to six weeks, we have been thrown time. That was the lemon that was thrown to us during the lockdown. Opportunity was time. Lockdown was the adversity. Many people saw the lockdown, but they didn't see the time behind the lockdown. Um, you know, what do you do with that time? You can either invest it or you can spend it. If you invest it, you're saying, I want to get something out of it, and I'm going to put myself into it. So you invest in knowledge. You invest in skill. You invest in, in getting the right attitude. And the right attitude, I think, is perhaps no doubt the best the most important one. When I talk knowledge, skill, and attitude, one way to always quickly remember that is King Sonia Day, KSA, knowledge, skill, and attitude. Invest time in building yourself for who do I want to be after COVID? Who do I want to be post-COVID? How do I want to be, be seen? How do, we want, how do we come out of this with growth? Where are the areas of need? Invest your time in developing new skills, new capacities, new capabilities. If you need to run trainings, go for it, whatever it is. But the most important one is develop your heart. You know, knowledge is about the head, skill is about the hands, but attitude is about the heart. So what leaders do is they invest time in developing their head, their hands, and their heart. That's what I want you to remember. As you listen to all these amazing speakers tell you their, spirit, their experiences and show you the, 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 the presentations, remember, it, in the end, it is you that must determine what the outcomes will be. It is you that must invest the time that is required. And most importantly, build the relationships that you need. Everything's going to happen through a relationship. So use this time to build relationships. People will remember who called them during COVID and who didn't call them. So I want you to use this time. I mean, good news is, you know, we might start unlocking from 2nd of May, but use the time now to make as many calls as you can. Check on people. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Chizo. Fantastic. You know, I hope everybody's gotten something from it. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you so much, fella. Thanks. That's such a beautiful one. And um, so much to learn and so much to take out of this. Opportunity wears the mask. Unveil the mask and take advantage. Leadership mentality just builds the mentality and position to reposition. So many great things to take out of fella's presentation. But I think the most remarkable is KSA. Find knowledge build skills, change attitude. If we're not taking anything out of this period of crisis, we are taking the sort of skills that Fela has summarized for us today to be able to take into the post-COVID world. Find knowledge, build skills, change attitude to a very positive one. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much for that insightful presentation. At this time, I'd like to recognize the presence and say on behalf of the board and executive directors of FITC and the sitting directors of FITC. The chairperson of the board of FITC, Mrs. Aisha Ahmad, is extending her gratitude and pleasure and warmth to all of the listeners and participants from all over the world. Aisha Ahmed is the Deputy Governor of CBN, and she is the Chairman of FITC. She's right here with us. She's live on the program, and she's also extending her warmth to the rest of the world.
Thank you so much. It's good to have you here and one day also to speak to the world upon all of, um, on behalf of all of us. Thank you so much. We'd like to use this opportunity at this time to call on our next speaker today, Jideon. Today we know already how he has done great things with communications, with PR, globally, African continent wide. But today, Chida is going to be sharing experiences and equipping us to be able to take charge of our life, take charge of our happiness, take charge of our future as we turn into the post COVID era. You're welcome today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, I was taking down so many notes from um, FD, we call him FD. Um, <laughs> And, you know, it's, I mean, I don't think it's fair for me to be coming up after FD because how do I get myself together? But it's a pleasure to be here. I'm very grateful for the opportunity. And so we'll get right to the presentation. Um, so one of the beautiful things I'm supposed to be talking about, I'm talking about taking charge of your own happiness um, in, a time, in, in a time like this, in a time like COVID. Um, but you know, one of the most remarkable things is that People often ask me, um, how are you coping at this time? What are you doing at this time? How are you keeping yourself um, um, excited? How are you keeping yourself happy? How are you keeping yourself flourishing at this time? And what's fantastic about it is many of the things that people need to do at this time, um, that they are learning, that they are now finally taking seriously, um, are things that we've always known that human beings should do on a regular basis to maintain their balance, to maintain their sense of flourishing, to maintain their own happiness. This has been, this is research that we've always known, always known, always known. Um, but what's happening now is because we are facing this tough, tough times, suddenly those skills, those tools, those practices, those rituals, those um, 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 disciplines that enable people to live happy lives, have begun to be popular at this time. And so there's a lot of research about happiness. There's been a lot of research about happiness over the past 30 years. And what I want to do is to reduce all of that research into two things that are easy for you to remember as we go through this time, especially because, and this is very important, people, uh, the people who are most likely to flourish through this crisis are those who don't pretend about how long it might take are those who don't um, deceive themselves or, or, or ignore the reality of how long this is likely to take. That governments have told us that the lockdown in some form might last three months. Um, that there is not going to be a new normal after this. Certain things will continue to be facts of life after this. Wearing face masks, not having large gatherings. Um, 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 renewed hygiene, new work practices. Um, and some of those things are going to, some of the extreme measures are going to continue to the end of the year. And so one of the first things that we want to do at this time is to remember that the reason why these happiness practices truly matter is because this state of change and flux is going to exist for an exceedingly long time. It's going to exist for more than six months by, based on all the research that we've heard. But also, that even after we find the vaccine and find the cure, our lives are not going to return to how they were before. So those are, that's a crucial, and some people might say that that is, a sad, that is sad news, but that's more sad news, because accepting reality first and foremost enables you begin to make the decisions and take the actions that ensure your long-term well-being. Now, there's a video that I had to play. I'm not sure if the video... Is ready? Yes. Can we play it quickly? It's a one minute video. Many of us might have seen it from Morgan Freeman. It was on his Instagram page last week and I thought it's a good summary of all the research. Can we play it? If it's not playable, we'll move to the next. If it's not playable, we'll move to the next. Let's move to the next. If it's not playable, let's move to the next slide. Okay, 
So the first, there are two things that uh, Morgan Freeman said in that video, and they are ways of summarizing a lot of the research about human flourishing and happiness, and especially about resilience in difficult times. Number one is never to forget the good that you see around you. Number two is to be the good around you. Now, um, when people see these two quotes, they often sound like motivation or inspiration. But the thing is that these two are grounded in both the science of positive, positive psychology, the latest research in the neurosciences, and some of the insights we're getting from cognitive psychology. They are showing us that some of those things that we have always been told from our faiths, from philosophy, from, um, um, from our parents, from just common sense, over the course of our lives, have now been proven by science to actually make us happy. We're going to go to the next slide now. Next slide. So two questions. Number one, how can you see and be the good in the society in uncertain times? Number two, how can we be a force for greater good at a time when people are dying of coronavirus? At a time when many of us are feeling unsafe about coronavirus, at a time when many of us don't even know how long this is going to take? The answer is twofold. Number one, build your own immunity. Number two, spread positive viruses. Those are the two things I want you to remember. Summarizing all that research into two things. Number one, build your own immunity. Number two, spread positive viruses. Next slide. Now, when you say build your own immunity, there are two things. One, we've learned that one of the most important um, um, things that ensures people survive um, um, this COVID thing physically, or that they do not, when they are infected, they do not get overwhelmed by it, is from having a strong immunity. So some of the advice has been eating well, exercising, taking your vitamins. Now you want to take that same metaphor into your own mental and emotional health, which is, at this time, there's a lot of negativity coming through from the news, from social media, from people who are around you. You're going into the road and you see, uh, you see, uh, um, um, you see people using face masks. You see what looks like desolation across the road. Um, and you want to, you're thinking to yourself, it, it leads to a situation where you panic, where you get afraid, where you get frustrated, where you get confused. The most important thing that the scientists have told us we need to do, even for our own physical health, is don't let all of those things affect your physical health. In the same way, we want to say, don't let all of those things affect your mental health. You want to create a force field around you that helps you build the immunity. So I'm, I, know there is, I know in the comment section there's somebody who is spamming and trying to hack. So that's, um, I, and I'm sure that the FITC guys are sorting that out. They're trying to get that sorted. They're working on this. They're working on that. Um, and so it's actually it's part of the things we're trying to learn, which is when there's somebody, is there something trying to distract you, when there's chaos, when there's crisis, how do you keep yourself immune from it? Um, the first thing is to take care of our mental, physical health. So exercise well, eat well, take care of vitamins, call family or friends, read good books, all of that. The second way to build your emotional health is something that the science calls affirmations. You want to, re, re, want to ensure that you constantly have written down somewhere a constant a, a set of ideas and, 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 and statements and realities that you want to be at this time. You want to say, if, if you're dealing with fear, you want to have affirmations like, I am not afraid. Um, I am strong. I will survive this. I will be fine. We will get through this. Everything will be good. There is a powerful um, set of research about how important um, 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 positive statements, positive affirmations are at a time of crisis. I'm going to pause a bit because I think this, the, the, we're struggling a bit with the slides because of all the things that are happening.
Can I continue? Number two is to master your feelings. There is a hack that we use at Joy Inc. There's a hack that we use at Joy Inc. Uh, three questions that will help you at this time. At any time when you're feeling panicked, at any time when you're feeling afraid, at any time when you're feeling disturbed, at any time when you're feeling confused, ask yourself three questions. Number one, what am I feeling at this time? Number two, what am I thinking at this time? Number three, what am I doing at this time? Now, let me explain. Usually what, what cognitive psychology teaches us is that our feelings, our emotions, if you're feeling fear, confusion, panic, it is usually a result of something you are thinking. And many of us are often not conscious of what we are thinking. But our bodies are thermometers. Our bodies are like thermostats that show us what we are thinking at any point in time. And so if you want to find out why you are feeling a certain way, you want to trace the line from your emotions to your thoughts. Now, this is also the thing. Our thoughts are often a, a consequence of our actions at a point in time. So when we are thinking something, is because we put ourselves in a certain situation. For instance, if you're feeling thoughts of panic, it is most likely that you've been reading reports that are panicking you. It's most likely that you have been over-consuming negative news. It's most likely that you've been over-indexing on negative social media content. So what you want to do is to ask yourself, what are the actions I'm taking that are leading to these kinds of thoughts that are leading to these kinds of emotions? Once you, once you, once you trace it from emotions to thoughts to actions, then you can now begin to flip the chart. You now say, how can I change my actions? How can I change the kind of people I'm talking to at this time? How can I change the kind of places I'm going at this time? How can I change the kind of environment I've built around my house at this time? How can I change the way that I'm working with my colleagues at this time? When you do that, when you change the actions, and your actions are always in your control, your actions are always in your control. When you change those actions, you don't have to change the big actions. I always tell people, if you're on social media and you're following people who are causing panic for you, your first job is to mute, block, unfollow. And then you follow other people and engage with other people who help you build a positive sense of self at this point in time. So when you change those actions, when you change that environment, then it changes the kind of thoughts that you are thinking. And ultimately from that, it changes the kinds of feelings that you are feeling. So that's a crucial hack. It's a crucial hack from, from a psychology tool called cognitive journaling. It constantly helps you realize anytime you're feeling an emotion you don't want to feel, asking yourself, what am I feeling? What am I thinking? What am I doing? And deciding how do I change what I'm doing so that I can change what I'm thinking, so that I can change what I'm feeling will always bring you back to a place of calm. So that's master your feelings. One of the other things is to forgive yourself. Now this, again, again, this sounds like inspiration, but there's huge, there's huge, huge research in the, in the, in, 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 in the um, um, neurosciences and psychology today about the value of forgiving yourself. Now this is how for, for, forgiving yourself happens. At this time, you will make some mistakes. You will, you will go on, you will go, you will, you will welcome people into your home that you shouldn't have. You may forget uh, uh, to use your sanitizers. You may snap at your co-workers at this time. You may um, 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 buy a face mask that is not good. You may expose your children by accident to other people. You may, you may, you may have to make tough decisions in the work. Now, at each of those times when you make mistakes, the key to ensuring that the mistakes don't cripple you is to immediately forgive yourself. Now, what, what forgiving yourself means is you say to yourself, I'm a human being. I make mistakes. However, next time I will do better. The reason why this matters is because if you don't forgive yourself, you will stay in the space of self-judgment, self-criticism, which will lead you to paralysis. Now, rather than learning and improving on the things that you did wrong, you will stay in the place of repeating the wrong action. So the science teaches us that forgiving yourself is a crucial hack for ensuring that you are able to correct, improve, and take the actions necessary to help yourself and to help other people at this point in time. Finally, find the good. This is so crucial. Um, one of the um, important practices that we recommend for people at this time, which you should use for all of your life, 
is gratitude journaling. Gratitude journaling. Gratitude journaling means every morning when you wake up, you don't ignore, you take your iPad, you take your phone, you don't ignore all the things that are going wrong in your life. No, you're not saying this is not, my life is in, I'm, I'm ignoring my problems. No, your problems will still be there. You can come up to them later. But the first thing you want to do is you want to take a paper and buy it. take your phone, take your notepad, and write down all the good that is in your life at the moment. The science of gratitude says that our brains literally begin to transform. We begin to make new neural connections. We begin to make new associations. We begin to build new strengths. Our brain begins to coordinate new messages that send messages to our bodies that all is good. Things can be fine. I can survive this. I can thrive through this. I can make this work. So finding the good is not just a feel-good exercise. It is a scientific discipline. Constantly finding the good in what is happening around you helps you build the immunity to take the actions you need to take to take care of yourself and to take care of others. Now, my slide has disappeared. So I'm going to quickly find is a that, copy. Now, I can't see it here. Is that a great just to take care of the person who is... Okay, that's fine. So I'm just going to find... I'm just going to find... No, just keep going, yes. Yes, that's fine. I'm just going to find it from here. Yeah, done. Um, just a second, guys. Just a second. Um, okay, here we have it. The second thing is to spread positive viruses. That means, what are the actions you can take that ensure that the people who come in contact with you don't infect you with their own panic, but instead you infect them with your own positivity? Five things. Number one, build a community that cares. Constantly surround yourself with people who are focusing on taking care of themselves and taking care of others. That's crucial. Because there's a lot of research about compassion and empathy. One of the research said the people who are happiest are the people who constantly think to themselves, how do I help other people? How do I help other people? How do I help other people? Now, one of the good questions to ask of this is, how can I be of service? Instead of, how can I focus on myself, my needs, my change? I don't like what's happening in my life. Everything is going wrong. My life has changed. When is lockdown going to end? No, you focus on. How can I be of service to other people? Just that question changes the focus of your actions, changes the focus of, I remember what we said, when you change your actions, you change your thoughts, you change your feelings. So how can I be of service is a hack that helps you change your actions, which ultimately helps you change your thoughts and helps you change your feelings. So the, one of the ways to spread, one of the key hacks to spread positive viruses at this time is to constantly ask yourself, how can I be of service to others? Number three, I mentioned gratitude. That's because one of the biggest researchers in vulnerability and, uh, and, and, and wholehearted living is a lady called Brené Brown. And she says she will never talk about joy without talking about gratitude. That all the research, all the science shows us that gratitude is crucial for joy. Now, not gratitude, not just gratitude as a random thing, but gratitude as a practice, as a discipline. That's why I recommended the gratitude journal. That's why many psychologists ask you to keep a gratitude journal. So what you want to do is two things. Have that your gratitude journal that writes down all the things you are grateful for every morning. Then every time you find a person who is doing something good, that includes FITC, that includes some of you who have been saying thank you. That includes, you know, Facebook, Instagram, all these people who have created these massive tools for us. Say thank you. Say thank you for the smallest to the biggest things. The constant saying of thank you sends a message to your brain, sends a message to your brain that things can be fine. There is a chemical in our brain called dopamine. What you want to do with gratitude is you want to constantly release dopamine in your brain that increases your resilience and your capacity to solve these problems. Finally, this is the time to innovate. Harvard Business Review article 2000 on managing oneself, key article on resilience says, the number one key to resilience is to ask yourself, all the promises I made to people, how can I keep them at this time? All my contractual obligations. If you have staff, you're struggling with how to pay them, have a conversation with them. Guys, I cannot pay 100%. Can we make this 70? Can we settle a new contract? Can we renegotiate our agreements? Can we discuss our, our, our cadence of work? 
Can we reach new agreement? It's important because if you stop, if you just believe, behave as if you have no control over your actions, then you will begin, there's, there's a positive psychology uh, thing, uh, um, 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 principle called learned helplessness. Learned helplessness means when people begin to feel like they have no control over their environment. That's what learned helplessness means. When people begin to feel like they have no control over their environments. But when you constantly think of ways to innovate, to fulfill your obligations to friends, to children, to clients, to employees, to employers at this time, it sends a message again to your body, to your brain, that you have autonomy, you have control, you can thrive. It doesn't mean that you do it the way you plan to do it before. It means that you think about new ways, new ways of meeting the same obligations. So those are the two things you want to do. Number one, to build your immunity at this time. And number two, to spread positive viruses. Um, I'm ending with a quote from my Bishop Desmond Tutu. We are made for something greater than our problem. We are made for the infinite. When you remind yourself that adversity is part of the mix and we humans were made for adversity, you remind yourself that there is almost nothing that we cannot overcome if we have the right tools and if we practice those tools. Thank you very much. And over to you, my dear auntie. She's up. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much today. Thank you. Thank you. I had to practice what I was preaching there. <laughs> all of that, all things working together for good. Yes, the brain, yes. The passion, the, yeah. the mastery of your words. And you know, I, I must say a big thank you to you, Chidi. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As I say thank you to Chidi, I will also say thank you to all of our participants from the 21 countries of the world, the whole of Africa, and everybody who is tuned in right now. You know, one, a, 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 what I call that uh, a bit distracting thing is that somebody stole into this webinar to distract. But then we saw also how unflinching that today was and persevered to continue to share his narration. But then they also forgot that this is FITC. We've got mastery of technology, huge mastery of technology. So we had to take the person out and get said goodbye to the person so we can protect the, and preserve both the attention and the technology platform of all of our team partners and participants. So um, thank you very much for today for holding that down. Thank you also for participants. That was such a wonderful delivery. What did we hear from Judy today? Build your immunity. COVID-19, it's coming, protect yourself. Every single thing you need to do from inside of you. And spread positive virus. Spread the positive one. Look out for people. Ask out for other people. Share joy, share happiness. Ensure that you carry everybody else along in your quest and paths, finding the solution. And I like the way we said about say thank you, the little gratitude we show to people, to the world, to, the, to God for even giving us life. It goes to keep our mindset strong and positive and innovation. Innovate, innovate, innovate. Today also taught us to outperform. In whatever you do, strive to outperform. Find out how you can be the best that you can be or the best version of yourself post COVID and always share happiness. And of all of that, we are greater than the world. Today, thank you so much, I would say, and another big thank you. And um, so for our participants, I would like to announce that questions and answers are also possible. Please share questions and answers so we can take at the end of the presentations. And a poll we drop from time to time so that we can drop the, uh, the, the uh, poll and feedback with regards to the uh, the, to the webinar. So feel free when you see the poll come up to just give us your feedback and insight of what you think about this webinar and give us your questions as well. Thank you. At this point, we'd like to call on hmm, Chingwe Edwin. Chingwe is a renowned economist, globally recognized economist. I call her the economist of her time 
the IMF president of her time, the global economist and world leader of her time. As young as Chinwe is, she's spoken alongside presidents, alongside bank CEOs, alongside at IMF, everywhere, Washington, Asia, sharing with people the principles of economies, the economies of nations, the economies of countries, the economies of Nigeria, and of course, how that impacts on us as individuals. So um, if we are going to hold a while for today, uh, for Chinwe, we can also ask Steve, if uh, Steve and Chinwe, whoever comes in first, please jump in and we would carry on. And um, at this point in time, I would also like to say a very big thank you to everybody who is live with us right now. We would, um, we would get to learn a whole lot today. And please get keyed on while we wait for Steve. Yeah, so well, while we wait for Steve to come, one of the things that I have also, uh, while we wait for Steve to get onto the platform, one of the things that are great learning from, uh, from today's experiences that I also practice as a person is in my own way. I make sure that I get out every morning and I make sure that I see the sky. I make sure that I see the grains. I make sure that I thank God for giving me life Thank God for making it possible for me to see the skyline and to see the green. And even in my little time of work, it gives me a kind of rejuvenation. And that brings happiness as well. So Steve, yes. It's your turn, Hi. Steve. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Shout out to everyone who is live uh, watching with us and all the amazing faculty who've spoken before me. Uh, FD, Shude, my brother, um, I'm waiting for Chin Wei as well, and thank you, Chin, for having me. All right, um, so today, um, I'm going to be helping just a few hacks, just like Chude has said, on how we can turn adversity uh, into advantage. So let's get into the business of the day. As you can see, uh, my picture, I'm way better looking in person. All right, so we recognize that globally, um, our money has taken a dip, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to leave all the whole money stuff to uh, Chinwei to talk about. But we all recognize that you know the world is in a flux, and for many of us, the biggest concern is you know we're all panicking. A lot of people are scared. You know, um, we've seen the value of the naira um, dip significantly. Um, we've seen how the price of oil has literally gone down the drain. We're almost today. Um, the price of toilet paper is more valuable than a barrel of oil. Um, so what I wanna be able to share today is just practical steps that you can take to, you know, just so to speak, have some level of financial and business immunity during this time. So let's get to it. All right, so let's, yes. Now in this particular slide, it says um, in the midst of chaos, there's also opportunity. You know, Phyllis spoke very eloquently um, about that earlier. Um, in the midst of chaos, there is also opportunity. Now, one of the things that I've recognized is you've got to be able to ask yourself the right kind of questions because, you know, I think it was Einstein who said you can't solve a problem um, at the level at which it was created. You've got to be able to elevate. You've got to be able to go a bit higher. You've got to be able to ask yourself the right kind of questions, right? So every time there's chaos, there's always opportunity. So think about it very practically. Now, um, COVID hyper, you know, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a biological disease. Now, who's making a lot of money? There are the people who perhaps are creating masks are making money. Healthcare professionals are making money. Hospitals are making money. Right now, your job as an entrepreneur or someone who's in employment is how do I ask the right questions so that I can profit, you know, and take advantage of what's going on and, you know, rise through this opportunity. Um, if you've ever gone through, if, you, if you've ever gone surfing before or you've ever watched people surf before, you would notice that the surfer can always ride upon the waves, right? Now, it's the person who is best positioned that has the ability to ride on top of the waves and the waves will carry that person to the shore 
Now understand this, everybody may be swimming or affected by water, but it's the person who has the right positioning, who has the right tools, who has the right equipment that will be able to ride on the surf. Now understand this, you know that when you're, when you're surfing, you don't necessarily exert energy. What you do is you change direction with speed. You have to learn how to adapt. I think that is my next slide. You have to learn you know, how to adapt. How do you blend and ride the waves? You know what I mean? Other people who are in the water will be paddling and swimming and exerting energy, flapping and just burning out, just trying to get to shore. Meanwhile, the person who has a surfboard just literally learns how to adapt and just ride and just ride the wave out. You've got to be able to ride the waves, just like chameleons. Chameleons are able to get into environments and just totally blend in and take advantage. And this is what I hope to be able to share with you during this session. So let's get to the next one. All right. So a few thoughts that I have, just about five of them, to be honest. Um, this is not the season to binge watch Netflix and chill. All right. Now, trust me, I have no problem with you Netflixing um, and binge watching your favorite series. I've been doing that as well. But also, this is the time to YouTube and learn. I'm going to say that again. Don't just Netflix and chill. You also got to be able to YouTube and learn. Now, please understand that it's the same, pretty much the same amounts of data that you would use to Netflix and chill that you could use to learn a skill. You can go on YouTube and learn how to write business plans. You can go on YouTube and learn how to create content for your TikTok, for example. You can go on YouTube and learn all sorts of things. Today, apart from Google, uh, apart from Google um, YouTube is the next largest search engine. So it's not, a, it's not a function of a lack of data. It's a function of where is your focus? You know what I mean? So I, um, I read a quote, you know, somebody was saying the other day on social media that don't let anyone pressure you and say, um, um, you know, hey, if you're not productive in this season, you know, don't mind them, just relax and chill. Um, I don't believe that because, you know, that reminds me of, you know, I don't know if it's ever happened to you when you were in university, um, you had all those guys who seem to be noisemakers in class and they will party and club and have a good time. Um, and they'll say, I beg you guys, if you could stop reading, let's go and party, let's go club. And you follow them to club, not realizing that when the exam comes, those guys will pass. Because while they partied with you during the day, they were jacking like crazy in the night. So don't just Netflix and chill, YouTube and learn. And I'm going to say something that I always say. It's not what you don't have that limits you. It's what you have, but you don't know how to use. Let me say that again. It's not what you don't have that limits you. It's what you have, but you don't know how to use. Before COVID, many of us would say, I don't have time to go through an online course. I don't have time to go uh, get a coach. I don't have time to work out. I don't have time to get a degree. Now, guess what? When COVID happened, we had all the time in the world, but we didn't have the focus. We didn't have the discipline. So in reality, pre-COVID, it wasn't a, a lack of time that was your issue. It was a lack of focus and perhaps a lack of discipline. It may not sound like what you want to hear, but that's the ugly truth. All right, let's move on. Number two, you've got to be able to break your limiting beliefs. And, and Trudy um, has spoken so eloquently about this. Um, you know, it's quite amazing how all the speakers pretty much are flowing one into the other. Uh, and today talked about your, your limiting beliefs and your mindset and things like that. Um, I will talk about this briefly from the context of your life experiences create your belief systems. All right. Let me say that again. Your life experiences create your belief systems. All right. Your belief systems determine your decisions and then your decisions will determine your destiny. Let me say that again, because I know some of you are taking notes. Your life experiences will create your belief systems, right? Your belief systems determine your decisions and your decisions determine your destiny. So what, why is this important? A lot of the experiences we have are based on the exposure we've gotten. All right. A lot of the experiences we've had are based on the exposure we've gotten. So if you're not getting the right kind of exposure, right, you will believe certain things. So for example, in this season, a lot of people are losing money. However, a lot of people are making a lot of money, right? 
So some people say, and you know, and I, I think Chinwe is going to talk about this when she goes into the whole thing about money. And I, I, I was saying something on social media the, the other day, and I said, you know, you are poor when you have to be physically present to make money. Now, when I said it on social media the other time, a lot of people were very upset, and this was pre-COVID. Now, many people have been away from work for about a month, two months uh, going, and they've not been able to make any money beyond perhaps their salary. And many organizations are, giving, are offering pay cuts because they can't keep afloat, right? But if you don't have a belief system that says, I need to be able to make money, I can actually try. You know, sometimes we try things and they fail, and we say, you know what, I'm never going to do that again, right? So it's not about what life throws at you. It's how you respond to it. So this is the time to say to yourself, listen, hey, you know what? Maybe I've never succeeded at this thing before, but if with the right exposure, and this is what FITC is bringing to the table, with the right training, with the right exposure, with the right associations, you can break your limiting beliefs. All right, moving on. Number three. I hope this is making some sense, fellas. All right, uh, number three, hit me up. Okay, while they wait for it, let me find it. Let me find it. Uh, number three would be, let me see. Yes. Number three is ask yourself, what problems can I help people solve? All right. What problems can I help people solve? You got to remember, guys, that money follows value. All right. Money follows value. So if you're offering value, money is a symptom of it right? But you can't go chasing money just for the heck of it. Money follows value. So in order to, you know, solve that question, you got to ask yourself, what problems can I help people solve right now? So for example, let me give you something that I know someone did. There's someone I know who's a baker. And many of you who are entrepreneurs are sitting at home and you're saying, my business has been disrupted. The way I probably run my business has changed. Everyone is going online. I don't know how to do this, yada, yada, yada. So for example, I gave an idea to someone who I know who's a baker. So normally she would generally deliver cakes and stuff like that. But because of the lockdown, there were restrictions of movement. So she couldn't you know, deliver cakes. She couldn't bake. So I said to her, do you know that you have a captive audience of Lord knows how many people who are in Nigeria who are sitting at home and are looking for things to do? So you can't bake, but guess what? You can teach people how to bake, which goes to my fifth point, but I'm just preempting myself. What if you teach people how to bake? So there are many uh, people at home who have an oven, right? They generally use the gas cooker, but most people don't know how to use the grill. They don't know how to use the oven. So why don't you teach them how to, you know, bake a cake from home and you can walk them through something on Zoom or something or the other. And long story short, she did it, my friends, and she ended up making more than a million naira. But that money would not have shown up until she asked herself the question, what problem can I help people solve? Um, there's something Fela taught me many years ago, and he says, the bigger the problem, the bigger the solution. Are you with me? The bigger the problem, the bigger the solution. The bigger the solution, the greater the value that is placed on that solution. Stay with me. The bigger the problem, the bigger the solution. The bigger the solution, the bigger the value that is placed on the solution, right? Now, the bigger the value, the bigger the money people pay for it, right? The bigger the value, the bigger the money people pay for it. And the bigger the money, the bigger the boy or the bigger the girl. You get me? All right. So ask yourself, what problems can I help people solve? Moving on. Let's go. Number four. Thank you very much. I hope this is making sense, fellas. All right. Check it out. Now, this is for um, the entrepreneurs. Now, when you're marketing, right, you got a product, you got, a sell, you got something that you got to sell. Um, this is the time to use what I call emotional and also ideological triggers to make customers buy. Now, you probably say, well, it's COVID. I'm not making any money. Um, I, I probably sell, I sell hair. I sell wigs, for example, like, you know, weaves and wigs. Um, and no one is buying because no one is there to look fly, blah, 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 right? Now, you got to be able to understand that when you're selling to your customers, you're selling in reality to their deepest, darkest secrets. You're selling to their deepest and darkest fantasies, particularly the things that they're not willing to tell other people. Let me give you an example. Um, let me use 
Victoria's Secrets as an example, all right? So they sell lingerie. Now, um, why do most women, right, buy lingerie from Victoria's Secrets, right? Now, they spend top dollar buying those lingerie, not because it's comfortable, and it's probably comfortable, not because it's nice. They want, listen, let me help you understand what they want, right? Some of their deep, dark desi desires are, if somebody gift opens this gift box that is this woman, when they unwrap the package, if you know what I'm saying, when they unwrap the package, they're going to see that the gift is even much more beautiful than the package. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. They're selling to the desire for every woman to be seductive, to be sexy, to be amazing. You know what I mean? That when her man looks at her, she's not, he's not looking at every, any other woman. Every other woman will fade into the background. So they're buying an idea, which is talking about the ideological trigger. They're buying an idea of an, an image that they're trying to communicate that says, I am sexy, I am amazing, I got it going on, and sexy women wear Victoria's Secret. Mm -hmm. you know so you gotta be able to sell using emotional and ideological triggers. Let me give you one more example before I finish. You sell hair, for example. Um, this, you, so you don't say, oh, come on, buy a wig. You know, I, so I see uh, people on social media, they, they're, they're marketing their weaves, and they just put you know, three weaves, and they say 20 inches, 60 inches, and they put the price. I'm not going to care about the, the length of the wigs until I see what it makes me look like. Now, what do I mean? You don't buy, people don't, you may sell wigs, but what people are buying are, let me say it this way, head turning hair. What people are buying are hair, hair that turns other people's heads. That's what they're buying. That is their deepest, darkest desire. That when they walk into a room, with that weave, if no one touches your hair and says, ah, this your weave is fine, or this your wig is fine, then you've not bought hair. You have bought nonsense. You know what I'm saying? So you've got to learn how to speak to the deepest, darkest desire of your customers. And my final thought, number five, let's go to it. Here we go. Number five, and I've alluded to this, this is the time to show and sell your expertise. This is the time to monetize your message. Have you noticed? that on Instagram, everybody is going live. Every Tom, Dick, and I'm not gonna say Harry, my name is Harris. Every Tom, Dick, and Lassissi, yes, is going live, right? And it's almost like everybody's talking, everybody's teaching, everybody's training. And the reason they're doing that is they found out, they, they're finally catching up to the fact, what we've been saying forever, that the knowledge economy is where it's at, that you can become an entrepreneur, you can become a knowledge entrepreneur. You don't have to be a coach to sell your expertise. You could be a banker who's worked in the department for 15 years. You've worked as a marketer. You know something about marketing. You know something about closing deals. You know something about handling objections. You know something about breaking the ice with customers that you can create as content and you can begin to teach. This is the era, ladies and gentlemen, of building your personal brand. Even if you do have a corporate brand, even if you run a business, this is the time that you can actually also build your own personal brand by sharing and showing and ultimately selling your own expertise. There are people who are interested in marketing and sales and you've worked, you've done that as a banker, you've done that in the past. You know something about the other. Heck, you're a mom, right? Or you're a single mom raising a kid by yourself. You know something about raising kids because you're a single mom. You can teach other women who are single, right? How to raise your kid because you know that, you know, the frustrations that you know, that, um, that you've gone through, you can show and sell your expertise. And my final slide is this. If you run through all these things, right, all these five things that I've shared, there is major opportunity just ahead. I'm not going to sound religious, but you know, they say that where there's a cast casting down, other people will say there's a lifting up. Why? Because those people have been able to ride on the waves, on the surf of change because they're well positioned. They are able to adapt. They're able to innovate quickly. This is not the, listen, check it out. Haven't you seen, I, I heard, I saw it, Eco Hotel, right? The, the hotel chain is now do, doing, um, whatchamacallit, you can order food from Eco Hotel and they'll deliver to your doorstep, right? Now, probably they would never have figured that, that, that out before, but they realized that we've got this massive spread of rooms, right? And we have no takers. We have no one. Everyone is sitting at home. You know what I mean? So every day our rooms are uninhabited. It's costing us money. What if? Ladies and gentlemen, what if we take our kitchen, which is productive, and begin to offer a service and get people to order luxury cuisine, gourmet meals, 
brought to their home at a price within their reach. Let's bring the eco hotel experience to your home. There are other hotels. There's a, there's a hotel in England. I can't remember Cambridge hotels. I think it's called, they've opened their hotels as isolation units. So they're renting out the rooms as isolation units. Ladies and gentlemen, there are amazing opportunities. I can't wait for you to take them. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Wow. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Steve. I can only say another wow. The, the comments and questions around your presentation has been incredible. Steve is passionate. Steve's got tips and all of that. I like the fact that people are learning. Thank you so much, Steve. What did he say to us today? Anytime there is chaos, there is opportunity. Find the opportunity, seize the opportunity. It's not what you don't have that limits you because you do have what you really need. Start where you are. You never had time, now you have time. Find the passion, build the passion. And of course, Steve shares with us that your life experiences can turn to believe, which can become your destiny. Turn to positive experiences, grow positive experiences so that your belief will be positive. And then what problem is it that you can solve? What is the problem you can help the world with? What is the innovation again that you are bringing to the table? Innovation, innovation, innovation. We keep hearing that today. And Steve also shared with us, sell your expertise. What can you do? I never stop to talk to young people about boobers. My dearest Forbes woman, global. The only known Wanyakamu in Nigeria who has exported pap to the rest of the world. What about that? Pap is not what she's born with. Pap is an expert she grew in her little kitchen, which she's converted to millions. And today she's one of the youngest exporter outside of Nigeria. So start from where you are. Find whatever you can sell. Build an expertise around it and then convert your skills, skills to passion, passion to profit. We all have seen our dearest Tara, who just moved the passion of making women beautiful to become one of the biggest national brand from Nigeria to the world, Tara Makeup. Find your passion. There are so many things that we can do. And then opportunity lies ahead give value to people, they would pay for value. Whether it's knowledge content, whether it's passion, whether it's skill, whether it's art, whatever it is, build a passion, hit the world, mold yourself to be valuable and give value to the world. Thank you so much, Steve, for that very insightful delivery. And so our participants will take a poll right now and uh, about the session. So please take a minute to fill out this poll and we'll come back to the last speaker and that's the Chiwe. So while you're doing that, Chiwe, please get, get ready to come on and we would, um, we would take your presentation. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. So um, this slide is just a snapshot of everything that's been going on with regards to the economic downturn triggered by COVID-19. So the COVID-19 pandemic has triggered economic downturn and resulted in economic shocks across countries, not just in, um, not just in Nigeria. Now the significant decline in oil demand has led to supply gloves, hence causing oil prices to drop. And the country's primary source of revenue, that's Nigeria's primary source of revenue, is from oil receipts. So this decline in oil prices, as well as difficulty in selling off crude, has had a visible dent on the country's revenue. Now, the decline in oil prices is reducing foreign exchange inflows into the country, into the country's external reserves. And in addition, before the COVID-19 outbreak, Nigeria was experiencing a steady exit of foreign portfolio investors, and this was already contributing to depletion of our foreign exchange reserves. In light of these that, that I've mentioned, the CBN tweaked its efforts policy on the 20th of March in what the president termed a realignment. And so the Naira is now transacting at um, 360 Naira per USD. 
on what um, the CBM refers to as its official window or official rate for preferential deals. Initially, it was 307 Naira USD, and it's at around 318 Naira per USD at um, the NAFEX window, which is a window for investors and exporters. On the black market, where most people usually would access their FX, we've seen the rate hit as high as 450 Naira per US dollar. So what does this mean, right? For businesses sourcing imported inputs used for finished products, these um, businesses are going to find it slightly more difficult to gain imports for their imported inputs. It will become more expensive, essentially. For those that import to sell, so if you import to proceed on ongoing selling in Nigeria, these items will become more expensive to secure. The transmission effect of this foreign exchange movement will be passed on to consumers. That's the everyday buyer, so you and I. Hence, prices of goods are set to rise. Expect to see the prices of products on shelves across departmental shops increase. Now, assuming that after this health crisis is over, the exchange rate remains at these new rates, when international travel resumes, travel will become more expensive for those tra traveling out of Nigeria. For those that have US dollar denominated expenses, if you are paying a mortgage outside the country, school fee, you're doing distant learning and yet to complete fee payment and so on, this will definitely result in an extra squeeze on your pocket. Now there is an upside for those in the diaspora, especially those in the US, UK or Canada. You can now get more Naira for the currency you are earning. This is a good time to make some investments at home, diversify your investment portfolio. You can also consider getting property using the right agent, so due diligence is key. What does this downturn really mean? Softer demand, as I've mentioned. So service providers will have to understand that they may not be at the top of people's spending priority list anymore. Nigeria was already struggling with soft demand before this um, pandemic broke. Since the country's recovery from the recession in 2017, people's pockets have not been fully rebuilt and demand has been relatively low compared to what was obtainable, let's say, in um, 2014. Now, with this pandemic, it is very likely that Nigeria will see weaker demand. I'll just throw some light on an example of something that, or highlight the extremity of the squeeze in pocket. An example of this can be seen with the money distribution of cash, which we refer to as pay from the Federation Account Allocation Committee to state government. Now, most state government on this payout um, each month to pay salary, to uh, also take care of pension and to fund their school projects. If revenue from oil accounts for 7% of this payout, sharp decline in oil prices means that they need to receive significantly less than what they will be receiving. So what does this mean? Salary pay, salaries may be cut or have to be um, laid off and the ripple effects will be seen in um, pocket squeezes which would affect sales. This will affect sales for businesses because they will struggle more to sell their services. Now businesses that are attached to this will also face some challenges they expected declining. So ranging from contracts to some stationary or catering or toiletry, you need to look for what would put you ahead of your competitors that are offering the same service because due to limited resources available, Spending priority lists are going to be adjusted significantly. What are you doing as a business to ensure each person's spending priority list? So that's food for thought. Now for employees who are on this webinar, businesses are in a hazy business environment. Most decision makers across companies are trying to navigate what is now being referred to as the new normal. Now is not the time to stick to your defined KPIs and expect that that would be sufficient you need to work beyond your desk. So what do I mean by that? Navigate like an intra entrepreneur. That's entrepreneur, I am entrepreneur, not entrepreneur. 
Chiwa is already talking to us about the finance part. So if all of the speakers are on standby and ready, FD, um, Steve, when you're ready, we'll take a few of the questions and then today as well, because a lot of questions have been coming already. While Chiwa is connecting, FD, somebody would like to hear, and this question is from Tony Iweka from Abuja. He says, adversity causes some people to break and it also helps others break records. How would you advise entrepreneurs at this time to create a positive circumstances and mindset that can help them break records and disrupt post-COVID? Oh, well, uh, thank you so much. And, uh, you know, uh, I think that to a large extent, uh, you know, if I would have to answer that question, I literally will be repeating that what every and each and every one of the of the uh, great, amazing panelists have said. You know, I think that at this time, for instance, for every entrepreneur, you have to go back to this whole thing. Again, remember, there is always an opportunity. There's always opportunity. I described it to someone who I was coaching a couple of days ago. I said, where is the river flowing? Stop looking at the desert. There's a river somewhere. Where is it flowing? Um, you've heard uh, Chude talk about adapt. You've heard uh, uh, Steve talk about adapt. You've heard Chin we talk about navigate. Place your river, place your boat on the level, you know, where the river is flowing. What does that mean? What are people buying? Where is the money going? Right? What are people buying? And I want you to remember, please, you know, you've got to be, you know, you've got to be uh, uh, ready to be able to be flexible. And I give the example of how I had to change some aspect of my business in 2000. And I give that example because it was a practical example how I had to change, you know, teaching people how to sell shares was not my, was not my goal. That wasn't my key area, but I built expertise in it because that was where the money was going. So today, where is the money going? You're going to think about all the sectors and what people are buying. And I think Ching was doing an amazing job with that. The most important thing is where is the money going? How can I help people? Where, how can I help them achieve what they want? What do they want? What do they need? What do they, what are they trying to achieve? Last thing I'm going to say, is this, you know, as an entrepreneur, think like your customer. Think like your customer. Don't just try to sell what you have to your customer. Ask, what is the customer trying to buy? What is the customer trying to buy? It's extremely important. This is where you are going to have to make that adjustment. What, and then the second thing is, how is the customer trying to buy? A lot of the things that used to happen face to face, customers are going, over the next few months, maybe be more uh, anxious about going out and doing a lot more things are gonna be done online. If your customer is online, you get online. What are they trying to buy? How are they trying to buy? Help your customer. Think like a customer, help your customer. One of the customers that is buying big time now is the government, okay? Government is paying big time for many things that they're trying to do to solve the kind of challenges that they're dealing with. So if you can do business with, customer, with the government, fantastic. If not, whoever your customer is, ask what are they buying and how are they buying? Whichever way it is, whichever one you can deliver, go ahead, adapt your business to be able to do it, and adapt your business to be able to do it the way they want it done, which right now, you know, is online. And so make sure your business has online capacity, capacity and capabilities, you know, to do, to do business. That's how you're going to be able to break records. You know, it's, it's, that's exactly what's going to happen. Thank you. Thank you very much, FD. Uh, that's concise. I'm sure everybody wanted to hear from FD as well. So you can imagine that that's a powerful summary of a lot of the delivery. And another question is for you, Steve, and this question is for Raymond, and Raymond is asking from Kenya. How do you recalibrate and reset to be able to get ahead of COVID, post, uh, to get ahead post-COVID? Your brilliant presentation says is the best thing to do and a few things we should do. But I need that push. Please, just two tips that I cannot forget about. Thank you. Um, well, um, first off, one of the practical things you can and, do. And uh, before you go ahead, Steve, please, um, can we just do the poll one more time? And uh, just one minute so we can take the polls. And so our participants, the poll questions are back up again. Please, very quickly, uh, Complete the poll and we'll come back to Steve with the question, how best to calibrate, recalibrate and reset. Recalibrate and reset post-COVID. 
Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I think you can go ahead, Steve. Yes. Right. Um, I think one of the things that you can do um, is number one, investigate before you invest. Um, whatever you're, and that means if you're investing in business or you're investing in coaching, which is important, which is my second point, um, you must make sure you investigate uh, before you invest. The second point, which I think is the most significant, is you know get a coach. This is the time to really get a coach. This is the time to be able to get someone who's been there, done that, um, to navigate, um, you know, to to navigate the places that you want to be. Um, no one just hops on a surfboard and just says, you know what, I'm going to go surf. You're going to drown. You're going to need expertise from someone who has track record in the area that you're trying to go. So I think this is a really good time to get coaching or you can get mentoring. So that'll be great. Great. Thank you very much. We've got another question. And this time the question is for you today. The question, uh, and right after that, we'll take the rest of Chile's uh, presentation and would we'll come back to another round of questions. So today, the question for you is from Habiba, and Habiba is writing from Accra. It's not what happens to you, but how you respond. Mm -hmm. How do you think that I can convert the positive energy you've told me to build to positive impact? Please mm -hmm. share so I can equip myself better post-COVID. Right. Um, one of the big five um, um, tra personality traits on the, um, in psychology, I think, is um, one of them is conscientiousness. And conscientiousness is the capacity to do what you have decided. So this is how I'm going to interpret it. This is not the, 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 the official definition, but it's the, it's the concept of doing what you have decided to do consistently sustainably until you achieve the goal. Um, um, somebody has said it's about keeping your promises, keeping your promises, keeping your promises. And what I'm trying to talk about is action. The one, there is no magic. You know, FD said something when we were coming here that when I shared to people how I've been coping, it was joking, saying, oh, today tell us how you've been coping, how you've been shining. So don't tell us the, oh, take care of yourself, be grateful. Tell us the real thing. Tell us the cream you are rubbing. And that's one of the issues I have. People often think that there is one hack one thing that when they do it will make all their dreams come true but no um the ability to keep your promises to yourself if you say i am going to do this i just, I just wrote a, a quote now from somebody um, you don't have to be just set god is one of my favorite thinkers and just wrote you don't have to quit your job to be challenged but you do have to be willing to live to take some responsibility to find something that might not work and to make it work. So that is the thing that translated. Action is the translator. Action is the translator. After you've said, uh, 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 these are the things that I need to do. These are the things that I want to do. These are the things I choose to do for my well-being. Unless you take action on each of those things, and unless you take that action, and if you notice the words I kept using when I was talking, because sometimes happiness, well-being, flourish can look very touchy-feely, very feel-goody. Very, oh, maybe it's just to be grateful. We'll be grateful. But no, it's the idea of a discipline, of a practice. When I talked about gratitude, I said gratitude has to be a practice. When I talk about these well-being uh, uh, tools, they have to be a discipline. The same way that you wake up every morning and you do your exercise and you eat for your body is the same way you have to do these things from your, for, your, for, your, for your heart and for your mind. So the translator is action. What are the actions you're going to take consistently? keeping your promises to yourself. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sudi. Take action. It's all about you. We would come back to Chinwe and complete our presentations, and I will come back again to the questions and answers for our great speakers. So don't go away, participants. Chinwe, thank you. Okay. Apologies for that great transition. Um, okay, so I'm going to return to the segment that was discussing employees. I was saying that businesses are in a hazy business environment, and most decision makers across companies are trying to navigate what's now being referred to as the normal. Now is definitely not the time to stick to your defined KPIs and expect that that would be enough. So you need to work beyond your desk 
navigate like an entrepreneur, so have an entrepreneurial mindset while working in a firm. So think of ways to move your company forward. Now you have to try to contribute to strategy sessions because a lot of that is happening now, what's going on across the globe. So if you do not have access to these sort of sessions, create snapshot documents and share with relevant players within your organization. A few pointers I will share. Any idea with um, budget cutting procedures that would not affect efficiency and productivity could work. Any idea on keeping existing clients engaged as well as securing new clients during this downturn. Or any idea around improving the tech savviness of your company, pushing aspects of your relevant new media trends. Another thing to mention to employees is if you are not already doing this, start setting aside a percentage of your income invest every month. You need to start building some financial questions. As for households, if you're running a household, anecdotal evidence shows that the largest monthly expense for households, speaking about households in Nigeria, so the largest monthly expense for households are power, generation, and household items, including raw food items. So now we are likely to see cost, a, a cost push inflation in coming months because of supply chain disruptions caused by the, the lockdowns. Supply chains have been affected, not just in Nigeria, but in most countries across the globe. There are growing concerns around steady food supply on the back of the teen crisis. So securing items to sell will become difficult or could become difficult. My advice is that bulk purchases should be adopted, buy in bulk, especially with non-perishable, but please bear in mind that you should buy what is relevant to you. Not, don't just buy for, for buying. You can save a little by doing this. There is one bright spot to mention in all this chaos. The price of fuel at filling stations has reduced. The ripple effect is all things being equal, reduced transportation costs and reduced cost of fueling generator sets. Sadly, given the restriction of movement right now, people cannot take advantage of this fuel cost reduction. The next slide. Okay, fine. Leave it on this slide. So GDP growth and some sectors to consider. As for GDP growth and sectors to still consider or look into for business opportunities, the country's GDP is expected to contract this year. One estimate points to recovery of less than 3% in 2021. Now that recovery may sound good because um, of course it's an uptick and nobody wants to see contractions, but understand that your, our estimated population growth is at 3%. So, when we say GDP growth below 3%, it's not particularly exciting because it means that it's not inclusive growth. So it's food goes to touching every um, aspect it should be touching. But it, that projection is something to stop given that it's mere contraction. The economic impact of this health crisis could last for at least up to two months. And this is post um, lift restrictions on the lockdown. Culture still remains a viable sector because people must eat. The logistics segment, which is under what the Bureau of Statistics calls the transport and storage sector, is a promising sector at this time. Every services have surged, and this trend is likely to last even after the restrictions are lifted. Then a few segments within the manufacturing sector that can support local support are also segments to look at. So what segments can help with curbing excessive imports? Before its latest monetary policy committee meeting in March, the CBN rolled out a few measures to combat the current economic headwinds. Five of those measures are beneficial to SMEs, and one of them is a CBN intervention of one trillion naira to push import substitution across all critical sectors. So, hearing this as a business owner or a solution-driven individual looking to stay afloat during this period, it is exploring sectors that can boost import substitution. Technology is another sector to look at. In fact, last week, an economic um, note released from my desk um, had, it, had its title as e-payment. E While we are waiting for Chinwe's connection, Chide, we've got a few questions that are coming on live for you. Chide, okay. Yes, and this question is on gratitude. And it says, right. gratitude you have shared with us is very important to keeping happiness and finding happiness. Mm. Is there anything new when you do not find something new to journal and remain thankful for? How do right. you remain in that state of gratitude? How right. do you continue to keep the state when you've thanked right. for everything 
everything and you journal everything and yet there is nothing new. Please take that today. Thank you. I love that. Um, so it seems I've written about this on Instagram. There is no expiry date on gratitude. You can wake up every morning and continue to be grateful for the same thing. Yeah, your brain gets the same message. So I wish, unfortunately, there's no way to do this, but I'm going to just try just so that you can see what I'm saying. It may not show, but that's fine. This is my daily joy journal. I am grateful today for amongst other things. If you look at it, you will see my room, sunlight, sleep, Lagos. If you check today, you'll see the same thing. My house, sunlight, Lagos. Yeah, so you can keep repeating. As long as you are grateful for it, there is no expiry date. It's a discipline. It's an experience. Your brain gets the message that there are good things in the world. I can survive this. I can thrive. I can be happy. Things are going well. So there is no expiry date. You can keep repeating things. When there are new things, you add them. But if you keep being grateful for the same thing every day for two years, it does not expire. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Steve, there's a question for you if you are there. And while we're waiting for Steve to come up, today there is another one for you. Okay. All right. Okay, Steve. So Steve is there. Fantastic. Steve, the question for you is, prior to COVID, businesses were excited and looking forward to the... Uh, Entrepreneurs are excited and looking forward to the positive things that can happen in 2020. Post-COVID, it's more disappointment. What are the key things that entrepreneurs must do to not only find their cost, hold their customers, but find new ones who may not have the economies to buy? Um, so that's great. Market, holding the current and finding new ones to remain profitable? Um, so that's a great question. Um, I, I will say this. Um, even, not, every, not every entrepreneur is going to sell something in this, per, in, this, in this time frame. Not every entrepreneur will be successful at selling. Um, but every entrepreneur will be successful at adding value. You know what I mean? So you can add value. There's no cost to add value. Um, this is the time where you need to be able to win the hearts of the customer. This is the time to deposit in their emotional bank accounts. This is the time um, where you need to show them that, you know, they, they weren't a transaction, um, but you had a relationship with them. Um, organizations that are not able to adapt in that uh, shape or form will lose out. So for example, you may not have any customers at the moment, but you can decide, for example, to, you know, go live and say, hey, um, you know, let's, let's show you, you know, let's, you know, let's show you all the amazing people that make perhaps red media, you know what I mean? And, or, or joy incorporated and surely can now decide to say, Hey, this is the CEO of joy. Um, you know, she's going to tell you what the organization is about. And, and the, the whole aim is to build an emotional connection with your customers that by the time business or so to speak, the new normal, uh, takes place, you've won their hearts. You, you, You've, you've constantly given, it's the, it's the law of reciprocity. You've given them so much value consistently that they feel like, man, they already owe you something in some way, shape or form. So you may not be able to sell right now, but you can share value. You can show them that you are an authority. This is the time to build and prove your authority status by just showing people why you are the go-to guy or the go-to gal in your business. And you know, once everything is sorted out, they need to, uh, to come back to, to do business with you. So that's my, that's my well, 50 cents right now, <laughs> which is like four, 400 naira, so it's cool. <laughs> All right, uh, FD, uh, there is a question for you, FD. And this question revolves around leadership. So a lot of young people would like to know, as youths themselves, who are also managing investments and businesses and managing portfolios as leaders and young CEOs, managing also the expectation of their, their, profession, their team members who are also young themselves. How are they able to guarantee that there's going to be stability and success post COVID crisis? So these are young founders of businesses and executives and this question is actually coming from Shoaib in Lagos. 
as a young founder of um, enterprise and fintech, how am I supposed to also lead the teeming young people in my operations and organization to success post COVID for the organization, for myself and for them? All right, uh, thank you so much. Uh, that's a great question. I think that, you know, like they always say, two things are going to be important in this time. Number one, you need to be able to focus the attention on, of your people on the possibilities of the future, the things that are, are here now, okay? So the idea being, look at some of the things we've talked about before. We said, you know, you, in this challenge, there are opportunities. They may seem to be hidden, but focus your attention on them. You've got to focus the attention of your staff on the good that can come out of this. I mean, should they talk about, about, about that very powerfully? Not only you know, seeing the good, but being the good. You've got to focus the attention of your people. This is, this is the time when your, your staff need hope. Hope is not hype. Hope is oxygen right now in the time of, 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 of adversity. They need that hope. You have to be a source of hope to your people. And you need to be able to help. You. And it's easy to find that hope when you can say to them, hey, guys, where is the opportunity? The second thing I'm going to say is this is the time to listen to them. You know, somebody once said, you know, and this is something I used to say many years ago, says, if you want to know what to do to succeed, um, listen to your customer. If you want to know how to do it successfully, listen to your staff, because they're the ones that interact with the customer. I, I tell you, in, in your team, there is untapped genius. If you ask the right questions of them, they will give you incredible insight. They will do, you know, research. Challenge your team to go and research the opportunities that are within the, the, the business area that you are, you're, you're currently in. And like I said, know what to hold on to, know what not to hold on to. Listen, even as, as uh, uh, entrepreneurs, some of your staff may have to go. Some of your staff may have to stay. The truth about it is you must know which ones am I going to hold on to. Make sure you keep your best staff. There are some of your guys who think like you, who, who are leaders, who carry the business in their heart. Whatever you do, hold on to those guys. Make sure you're constantly feeding them with hope. Tell them we're going to come out of this. More importantly, ask them, how can we come out of this? Insist that there is opportunity. Ask them the questions that we've been asking. What are people buying? Who are the people buying? And how are they buying? Remember those three things. Who is buying? What are they buying? How are they buying? And once you know that, now you understand the value proposition, Quest, ask your guys, how can we be relevant to that? How can we help them? What do we need to change to be able to make sure that we are helping the people to buy what they need to buy in the way that they buy? So it's two things. Number one, keep hope alive in your, in your team. Number two, gather your team together to make sure that you ask them the hard questions that get them to go and research and then listen to their answers when they give their answers, they will own it. And most importantly, keep the best of your guys. No matter what you do, don't lose the best guys, all right? Thank you, thank you very much. The, the answers to the poll are coming in and the poll answers are fantastic. We also have people turning in to say, how insightful is this session? Very insightful. You can see that 82%, so much learning. Insightful, 19%. And not insightful is totally zero. Thank you very much to our speakers for the wonderful delivery. And we'll, we'll still come back to questions. We just thought we should let you know what the polls are looking like while, that we, are, while we are here. And Chiwen, uh, yeah. a question is coming to you from Natasha, Atlanta, Georgia, United States of America. And Natasha wants to know about investments. So she has done a lot of investments prior to COVID in mutual funds, in savings, and different fixed deposit investments. Interests are low. Shares also that she has bought have also lost value. How do you advise that she goes about investments post COVID? Because it's a thing of importance to her as she builds career. Investments, answers on investment, Joanne. Thank you. Thank you. That's a good question. 
Um, so this season, the advice I usually give is that everyone should have a diversified portfolio. So you shouldn't stick to one investment instrument, which Natasha is already doing. And um, the mindset, investment mindset, should be a medium to long term mindset as opposed to short term. So do you expect to put in money now and then get like high returns immediately? You have a medium term uh, mindset. For stocks, we are highly in a we are in a highly volatile environment now. So most stocks are cheap. So the advice I would give is to for the good for the good companies or the good names will be to buy and hold because there definitely will be an, an upswing. So it could be a quick cycle. We're seeing a downturn now, but there will definitely be an upswing. So if you can, now is a good time to purchase some stocks and get ready for the upswing. Market. The bond market is also an interesting um, investment area to look at because yields on the FGM bonds are still at double digits, right? So um, the best to access bonds or going to investing in bonds will be a mutual fund that's heavily invested in the bond market. So you may want to consider exploring mutual funds that have bonds as um, a higher percentage of their investment portfolio. The treasury bill market, yes, we've seen a crash in that market, and um, the pandemic did cause a lot of flight to safety. So those who are um, extremely risk averse did the NTB market, and um, it caused the yields to crash. But as someone who's risk averse myself, I still believe that that's a safe investment space to be. So um, maybe you can rearrange the percentage of investments put into your treasury bill, but I do not advise that you cancel it completely. Another area that's worth mentioning for especially for the outside country is gold. Gold um, has an inverse relationship with economic um, dynamics. So now that there's a downturn, the gold market is actually doing okay. It's, it's, it's doing well. So for those who had gold before this downturn, they would see that the price of gold has really spiked. If you have enough money, you can get into the gold market. Now, I'm not talking about physical gold or gold bullions. I'm talking about um, investing in gold as though you're investing in a stock. So you don't actually have the physical gold, but you have um, you have some sh some shares in companies that deal with gold. And you, th this is available outside Nigeria. I hope that helps. Thank you so very much, Ewe. Thank you. Very insightful. And I would also like to let us know that besides the thousands and thousands of participants who skewed into this from all over the world, if you're looking at the screen, the FITC Future Series is trending toward in Nigeria right now. It's been trending all morning, it's on toward right now, and it's with 5,000 tweets and many much more. This means that this learning, sharing, and engagement is reverberating around the world. It's very important to, the, to, to people. The content is very important, and people are learning, and people are sharing information around it. And so our participants would come back again to questions, and we would do just one round of questions to each of the participants, and I would start with you, FD. Now, the next question to you, FD, is, how do leaders themselves find recovery, peace, happiness, and balance as they are saddled with all the pressures of staff, overhead, going back to the market? How can leaders refuel, rejuvenate, reset as they head back, charged and ready to win the market? Thank you. All right, that's that's an um, amazing question, and I I mean I coach quite a few um, CEOs today who you know who constantly say to me, "Fella, man, it's tough out there." You know, how do I give hope when even I myself I'm looking for hope? And one of the things that you know you've heard almost all through all every presentation is, and I still wrote this actually on Instagram yesterday. I said the fastest way to have something and to grow it is to give it. You know, the funny thing is that when you're looking for hope, it may be hard for you to find. But when you are looking for hope, to, or when you're looking to give hope, somehow hope comes to you. You know, the right words come to you. So I, I want every leader must understand that this is the time when you must become the channel 
not a container, but a channel. Be so focused on the people. Be focused on, on you know, your staff. Be focused on your customers. Be focused on the community, the nation. You know, how can you be of value? It's such an amazing thing. And Trude said this, the moment you start to think about others, somehow there is just, it's like as if light comes into you, it flows into you. So for me, I think that leaders today must be, uh, you know, in the mindset of service. How can we serve others? How can we make things better? How can we? And when you ask those right questions, like Steve said, the answers just literally fill your heart with light. So I know that it's a very tough time with, with, with many leaders. They are the ones carrying the burden of, you know, how am I going to pay salaries and still pay school fees for my kids? You know, how am I going to, which one should I, if I had money today, where should I put it? Should I put my family first? And these are many, many, many big things. Another thing I'll just say as the second one is, you know, beyond being a channel of what you need is find people like yourself and connect to good platforms like FITC. I mean, uh, a couple of weeks ago, you know, if I had this leadership summit where it was, how do you lead in time of crisis? You can learn a lot from people like yourself. You can, you can also, and, and you know, there's, there's so much information out there, webinars every day, find people like yourself who are experiencing what it is that you're dealing with. And then, you know, and the last thing is, you know, find a coach. What a coach helps you to do is to ask the right questions that brings out the right answer. So three things I've said, become a channel of what you want, of what you need, you know, which is if you need hope, find a way to try to get hope to others. Um, starting with your, your customers, your staff, um, the community, the nation, all of that. Um, number two, uh, you, you must make sure that you connect with others. Extremely important to make sure that you connect with others who are experiencing what it is that you're doing and constantly just ask, how can you be of help? How can you serve? I think it's, it's important. And, uh, and I think when you do that as a leader, you'll be able to get through. That's, that's great. Thank you very much, Fela. We've got a question for you today and for you, Steve, and of course, for you too. As we wrap up, this, this are going to be the last round of questions. And today, your question comes from Pamela. And Pamela is asking from Nairobi, Kenya. And Pamela would like to know, I love your teaching on joy. I, I promised myself I would find joy, but I also want to keep my joy. How do I keep my joy without right. distraction post-COVID crisis? Because I want to be able to find it, hold it, trap it. How do I keep my joy? <laughs> I love that. Find it, hold it, trap it. I should write a book with that title. Um, <laughs> The first, I mean, I'm going to, again, most of these things, there's a lot of this. I want to summarize it. Number one is to design your life. Um, there's an entire um, 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 program at Stanford about designing your life. You want to ensure that you surround yourself with the people, places, and things that strengthen your spirit, that give you joy, that help to bring out the best in you. Now, you have to design it. That is everything from where you live to those you live with you have to track down this is what are the people places and things at joy inc we call it your joy compass what are the people places and things that make you joyful that make you perform at your best that make you your truest best self you have to list them out and you have to design your life actually sit down and say what do i want to be doing on monday what do i want to be doing on tuesday what do i want to be doing on wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday to keep myself at my very best you have to design it. You have to, when you design it, then you can begin to work towards. The second is you have to create practices and disciplines. Just the same way you do, you eat for your physical health, you exercise for your physical health, and it is every day. You have to have practices and disciplines for your life every day that help you with your mental, emotional, and spiritual health. If that is meditation, if that's affirmation, if that's gratitude journaling, if that is prayer, if that is rest, if that is working with nature, you have to look for what are the things that when you do them, your heart and your spirit, uh, uh, you, you, you wake up feeling good about the world. You wake up feeling at peace, at rest. You wake up feeling centered, together, you know, joyful, hopeful. That's, and then the third thing is you need to constantly remove from your life what we call joy thieves at Joy Inc., Anything that makes you feel less than yourself, it is your job, your duty, your responsibility 
as the CEO of your own life to constantly cut out the weeds. Every day you cut out the weeds. Every day, I always tell people on social media, for instance, block, unfollow, mute. Block, unfollow, mute. Anything that is not good for your mental and emotional health. So one, design your life uh, by creating a joy compass. Two, create practices and disciplines to ensure that and to constantly be getting rid of joy peace. Thank you very much. And um, the next question goes to you, Chinwe. Chinwe, Risa Katz from UAE likes to know, as an employee with loads of potentials, who remains confident in herself? How would I get back to work and remain the best version of myself, getting ahead and, as usual, winning in my games and staying ahead of the pack? Well, that question is for you. Yeah, thank you. That's a good question. So, um, as an employee, this is a time to try to show that you are valuable. And um, this lockdown or the restrictions, I've noticed that some people are seeing it or taking it as though it's a vacation. And that's, that's the wrong thing. That's the wrong mindset. You need to show that you're valuable by looking for innovative ways to contribute to strategy sessions, as I said earlier. So I gave a few pointers. At your company, like what can you do to help with budget cuts that will not affect productivity and that would improve efficiency? I also asked, now tech is, the, tech is what's, what's in. So how are you, what, what are you thinking or what are you coming up with that could help your company slowly transition into being tech savvy? Because at least most companies here in Nigeria are not as tech savvy as they should be. So what contributions are you making now is not the time to just focus on your key performing indicators that were listed at the beginning of the year. That's not enough. You, you need to work beyond your desk. It is not, it is not, forgive me for lack of better words, it's not over savvy. You need to work beyond your desk. You need to try to think like a hypo. Now, a hypo is a high potential employee. Try to get on that list of being a hypo. So that when it comes to, when it comes to layoffs or cuts, mm. your name is far, far, uh, is far away from the, from the top of the list. So um, my advice is that you should continue to do what you're doing. And you said that you are top, you're already top on your game, but try to look for additional things that would make you seem valuable. If you don't have access to the leadership team of your firm, you can do snapshots. You can send out emails to, I don't know, like core departments that will find your contributions and you can get yourself into meeting agendas. You can, so, so just be more visible in the, but not visible with no content. So a lot of research around what your industry is doing, what competitors are doing, and um, just help and support with a lot of strategy sessions because that's all that's going on right now. There are so many strategy sessions going on, whether you know it or not, try to be available with regards to supporting the leadership um, team of your firm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Last question for the day while we close the session is going to go to you, Steve. And this question comes from EK, and EK is asking us this question all the way from, again, Accra. It looks like we've got a whole lot of global participants. So the question is, in this period, I love what you have taught about winning and keeping ahead. But as an individual, I like to win, and I like to win with many others. How do I remain keep the balance while holding on to my network so the more of us are successful and getting ahead, the more of us are better off. But I also want to keep my balance as I hold down my crew. How do I achieve that balance? Um, first off, I can all the way through. Give support to others while keeping balance. Got it. All right, so Akwaba, that's uh, IK in Ghana. Um, I will say this, um, collaboration is key. Uh, collaboration is key. Um, most people, this is not the time to be an island. This is the time for all of us to, uh, I'll say join hands, but they said social, social distancing. But not join. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Just, you know, join hands virtually um, to collaborate. Um, but here's the thing, even though you still want to be able to win, um, you need to remember that ideas are a dime a dozen, a dozen uh, but execution is really the only competitive advantage that there is. Um, so a ton of people can get the same idea, 
um, but who can execute better wins. So I, I mean, I heard the story um, that Alexander Graham Bell, who we know today as the father of the modern telephone, actually wasn't the first person to invent the telephone. It was actually Nikola Tesla. Uh, but the story goes that the reason Alexander Graham Bell today is known as the father of the modern telephone was, the one, was because he was the first to patent it at the office. So he went to the, you know, the office to register and patent the idea. Um, so sometimes we're caught up in analysis paralysis so we don't execute. Uh, so collaboration is key, uh, no pun intended, join hands. Um, but also remember that you know, while you're doing that, um, hustle, this is not the time to get caught up in perfection and saying when it's perfect, I just need to tweak it. Um, don't, this isn't the time to get your ducks in a row. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be done. Thank you very, very much, Steve. And uh, okay, we've got one more poll to take, and that speaks to the quality of our speakers. The quality, excellent, that's 80%. Good is 19%. Okay is just about 32%. And we are very happy to go with excellent at 80%, because this is a for formidable session, and we've got a formidable team of uh, well thought out individuals uh, sharing today. I would like to bring back all of our speakers to board. Yes, thank you very much. Welcome back, Fela, and uh, today, and Tiwe and Steve. It's been a wonderful deliberation today, and please come back and see on video, Steve, so that we can say uh, goodbye very well to our participants. And uh, Tiwe as well, yes, fantastic. And Tiwe, fantastic. Thank you very much. I'd like to say a big thank you on behalf of the board the management and the staff of FITC for working collaboratively with us, for putting this sort of content together. At FITC, we're extremely particular about building world-class quality content that impacts the globe, not just the little world we live around, but the entire world where our sphere of influence would reach. And today, you all have brought tremendous knowledge to the participants that have killed in and keyed in today in a session that reverberates around 21 countries of the world. And that's not a little thing. And of course, the whole of African continent, 12 African continents, 21 countries of the world. That's true impact, if you ask me. And I thank all of you for making that possible. I also thank you, our participants, for listening in today. For all the time that you send us the questions and you say we need to hear these new areas, we will be bringing more to you. We will be bringing more your way. The best we know as an organization, being a world-class organization that drives innovation and knowledge, leveraging technology. We would continue to engage, we would continue to bring more to the world. I wish everybody, not just safety, joy, not just joy, success, not just success, collaboration, and more importantly, like Chiwe has told us today, money is also important. Invest on the right platforms, find the right platforms, and Thank you so much, everybody. We'll bring you many much more. And for now, enjoy the rest of the day.